Today we're going to take a look at the Godox Flash wireless trigger and receiver system built into most of their flashes. Most of the flashes have both the transmitter and receiver function built in, whereas some of the larger flashes like the 8200 only have the receiver module built in. This wireless trigger and receiver system allows you to control multiple flashes from a single flash unit without the need to buy an external or separate wireless trigger uh, such as this uh, Godox X-Pro2 trigger. And today what I'm going to show you is how to control multiple flashes from the Godox TT350 to the other flashes and also from the Godox V1 to the other flashes. I'm also going to show you how to trigger flashes that do not have wireless triggers built in but have an optical trigger which is effectively the same thing and I'll talk about the pros and cons of that. Now the first thing I want to show you is how to use the Godox TT350 to act as a wireless trigger to control the other two uh, flashes off camera. So I have the Godox TT350 mounted on the camera and it's important whatever flash that you mount onto the camera is compatible with the camera brand that you're using. So for example, I'm using the Godox TT350O to go with my Olympus camera. Uh, if you had a Sony camera, you would need the TT350S to go with your Sony cameras and a TT350C to go with Canon or N to go with Nikon. Now the cameras or the flashes that are not mounted onto the camera do not have to be compatible with your specific brand. However, in this case, uh, I have the Godox V1 here, it's the V1O. So if I wanted to use this as a transmitter, I, would, I could mount this onto my camera. However, if this was the Godox V1S, for example, for Sony cameras, I would not be able to mount this onto my camera and use it as a transmitter for the other flashes. The other thing to note is that the uh, off-camera flashes like the 8200 that cannot be mounted onto a camera do not come in brand-specific uh, varieties. These are just simply 8200s, or in my case, I use the uh, Flashpoint brand, but this is just a rebrand of the Godox flashes. So this Flashpoint XR2O is the same thing as the Godox V1O, and this uh, Flashpoint Evolve 200 Pro is the same thing as the Godox AD200. Uh, now over here in the corner, I have an older uh, Young Nuo flash, which is not radio wirelessly compatible with the Godox flash system. However, it does have an optical trigger, and most flashes do have an optical trigger built into them. So I can actually fire this flash wirelessly through its optical trigger. So all that means is whenever any of the other flashes fire, this flash will detect that optically and fire at the same time. So the first thing we need to do is set up the TT350 to be in transmitter mode. So to do that, we just press and hold the sync button here until we see a flashing sort of wireless icon down here in the corner if it's not there already. And then we'll just rotate the wheel until we see the letter M, which stands for master. Uh, this means that the flash is now in transmitter mode. And next to it, you'll see the uh, channel number. Uh, we'll get to that in just a minute. But once you see the uh, wireless icon there and the letter M, just go ahead and push the set button. And then we want to set up the uh, Godox V1 to be in receiver mode. And then you do the same thing. You'll see like this little sideways lightning bolt. Uh, just press on that. The first click uh, puts it into transmitter mode. Another click puts it into receiver mode. And in this case, you'll see the letters RX, uh, meaning it's in receiver mode. And this is also on channel nine. So it's important that these both are on the same channel. And then we'll talk about groups in a minute. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, set up the channel to make sure that they match, because if they don't match, this is how you change it. So on the TT350, you see the CRCH, which stands for channel. So we're going to push and hold this button down until you see the channel number blinking. So let's, uh, in this case, just put everything to channel 8. So I'm going to rotate the wheel down to channel 8, and then press OK here, or set. And then on the um, V1, You'll see down here, this button here is labeled CH for channel. So we'll push that. And then you'll see the channel 9 get highlighted. And we're going to change that by rotating the wheel so that it now says channel 8. And then we're done. Now on the 8200, this is also on channel 9 right now. So we're just going to push and hold the GRCH button until the channel number starts blinking. And in the same fashion, we'll rotate the wheel until we see channel 8. 
Now that we have the channel set, we need to set the group that each flash is going to operate in. Different groups can be controlled differently, meaning you can set different power to group A and a different power or setting to group B. Uh, generally, as a rule of thumb, I like to set my key lightings to group A and any kind of fill lighting to group B and any uh, sort of background lighting I might set to group C. And the reason you want to do that is because you can control the power output for each group separately if we were dis decided to control these manually. And I'll do an example of that. But for now, I'm just going to set my key lighting to group A and I'm going to set this flash to group B because this is going to act sort of as a fill light or rim lighting. So right now this is already set to group A, but if I needed to change it, uh, I can just click this button here under GR and then rotate the wheel and put it into group A and we're done. And then on the uh, 8200, I have the same button here, group channel. I just do a short press on this and I can change it to B, C, D, or E. Uh, in this case, I'm going to set it to group B. Now, these two flashes here can only control up to three different groups, A, B, or C. If I were to set the Godox 8200 to group D, the, these flashes are not going to be able to control this one because this is on a channel that is out of the range of these two. So this has to be in group A, B, or C. The same thing here. This has to be set to A, B, or C when it's in receiver mode. And the 8200 is always in receiver mode because it doesn't have a transmitter built in because, of course, it can't be mounted directly onto the camera itself. Now, I want to get into a little bit of more fine print here because uh, the channel number is the specific frequency that these flashes will be communicating with each other. There's an additional setting called ID number that you can set in these. And I'm ignoring that in this uh, use case scenario. But the, the purpose of channel numbers and ID numbers is, so if you're in a room of other photographers using a Godox flash system, you want to be on different channel numbers so you're not uh, triggering each other's flashes inadvertently. Uh, and to further delineate your flash system from other photographers, there's an additional uh, ID number setting that you can set that's buried into the menus. Uh, so, for example, on the uh, V1, we can go into the menu and then scroll down until we see ID. And then we'll click OK on that and then just rotate the wheel and we can set the ID number. It looks like it goes up to 99. Now, for me, I just always leave this turned off because I'm never in a room with a bunch of other photographers using Godox flashes. But if you have the channel number and the group number set properly and the flashes are still not firing or triggering each other, then you want to go in and make sure you check this ID number is turned off or it's set to the same ID number as your other flashes. All right, now we're almost ready to start taking pictures. Uh, first thing I want to note is that the receiver flashes, which is in this case the V1 and the 8200, you could ignore whatever setting this is on. So this is in TTL mode and this is in uh, manual mode 1256 power. It doesn't matter what these say now because the TT350 is going to override whatever these settings are because we're going to control the settings from the TT350 from now on. So it's important to note what the settings are on the TT350, not so much what's on the other two flashes. All right, now let's take a closer look at the TT350. There are three letter M's on the screen right now. There's a bold M up here. There's sort of an M in parentheses down here. And then there's a little tiny M here that's highlighted. Uh, the highlighted M here just means that this is in master mode. It's in the triggering mode. The M up here means that it's currently in manual mode. But the M here in brackets is telling you uh, that this is the master flash and this is how this flash is set to. Uh, it's right now the master flash, the TT350, is set to manual mode at 1 16th power and a third. And we're going to change this to be off, meaning we don't want this flash to fire. I don't want it to affect the exposure. I only want the uh, V1 to fire and the uh, uh, 8200. So we're going to turn this off. So all I have to do is push the mode button when we're in M mode. And you'll see a little icon up here in the top come on with a little cross through the flash. Uh, if we push the mode again, it kind of toggles through TTL. 
back to manual and now this is turned off so all that means is is that when i push the shutter button on the camera this flash will no longer fire if i push the mode button and put it in ttl and i push the shutter button this flash will fire in ttl mode or in manual mode but again i want to make sure this is turned off this is how i want to set up this shot now i'm going to push the uh slave button here and now you can see the letter A. And this represents what do we want to set the group A flashes to. And right now we only have one flash in group A, which is the V1. Uh, I want this to be in TTL mode. So I'm going to go ahead and push the mode button so that it says TTL here. So no matter what this flash was set to before, it's now going to fire in TTL mode. Now we're going to do the same thing for the 8200. So I'm going to change this to group B by pushing the slave button. So now we're telling the TT350 what we want group B to do. And right now it's turned off. And you can see that the uh, 8200 says off. But we're going to change the uh, group B mode to TTL. And you'll notice that the uh, 8200 is now changed to TTL mode. And now I'm just going to push the uh, test button here and make sure that this fires and this fires at the same time uh, in their respective modes, which in this case, they're in TTL. Now, if I push the slave button again, I'm going to go to group C. Group C is turned off, and I don't have any uh, additional flashes. But if I did have a third flash, I could control it as well or just turn it off completely. So I'm going to leave it off. And if I push the slave button again, it goes all the way back to M mode, or meaning uh, master mode, and this is the master flash. And again, I want this turned off. All right, now just to quickly recap, I have the TT350 set to not to fire. However, it will still trigger the other two flashes. Uh, so we have group A in TTL mode, which is the V1, and we have group B in TTL mode, uh, which is the 8200. Now in the camera, we need to make sure we have a couple of settings uh, set. Uh, so let's go into the super control panel. The key one is to make sure that we are in a mechanical shutter mode. So in this case, I'm in anti-shock mode, which is one of the mechanical shutter modes on the camera. If you're in electronic shutter mode, uh, it's very unlikely the flashes will fire. I know some cameras can fire flashes in electronic shutter mode, but just rule of thumb, make sure your camera is in a mechanical shutter mode. And in this case, I'm using anti-shock mode. Uh, also, uh, I'm just in aperture priority, and the default settings are set to 1 60th of a second, which is actually it's set into the menu, and I'll go back to that. I'm going to leave it at f2.8, but it's also important that you um, set your ISO and fix that to the base ISO, which is in my case ISO 200, particularly when you're in a studio setting. Now, you can change this for uh, other situations where you want to raise the ambient light and etc. I'm not going to get into all of that. Uh, for this demonstration, we're just going to use the base ISO. You want to make sure you do not use auto ISO whenever you're using flashes. I found that auto ISO and flash do not work well together. You always want to set your ISO to a fixed number. Um, and then for white balance, I have it set fixed to uh, 5300K. Let's go into the menu and look at the other flash settings we need to take care of. So in the OM1, it's in shooting menu number one page six for flash. And the first one here is radio control mode. And we can ignore this because we're not using Olympus or OM system branded flashes. So we can leave this off. We're using a uh, Godox system. So it doesn't matter if this is on or off, but just turn this off. Uh, the sync speed, this is the minimum shutter speed that we can use or the fastest shutter speed at 1 250 the second. Other cameras might be 1 200, some are up to 1 320th of a second, but uh, generally speaking, uh, just set this to 1 250th or the fastest minimum shutter speed that is available to you. Now the slow limit, this is where we saw the 1 60th of a second for aperture priority. So this is what it's going to default to in any mode except for manual. In manual mode, you would set this to whatever you want. But in this case, um, we're going to leave it at 1 60th. That's perfectly fine for this uh, in-studio type situation. And then exposure comp, we're just going to leave that off. Uh, balance flash metering, we're going to ignore this. This is for mixing ambient light and flash together. 
but since we're in a studio and we're controlling all of the lighting, we don't need to worry about this. This is used more for like outdoor situations. And then flash mode settings, uh, we're gonna make sure reduce red eye is turned off. We don't wanna use that. And then synchro, we'll just do uh, first curtain shutter. All right, now let's go back into the menu and we're gonna go back here to shooting menu one, page two. And I want you to look at uh, this. First, you'll remember I set the white balance manually to 5300K. Uh, we also have here white balance for flash and I have this turned off. But if we look in here, you can see we can set it to white balance auto and we can set it to white balance flash or 5500K. So white balance auto, what that's going to do is it's going to measure the white balance with all of the ambient light and the flash mixed together and set it automatically. And if we set it to white balance flash 5500K, what it's going to do, it's going to ignore whatever setting we have here. And anytime we fire the flash, it's going to uh, set the white balance to 5500K. Uh, I'm going to turn this off because I manually set the white balance to 5300K. And the reason for that is when I looked at the specs for the uh, Godox TT350 flashes, uh, the manual said that these are set to 5300K. So that's where I'm gonna set this. Now, the, the right way to do it would be to uh, manually set your white balance using a gray card. But first, just quick and dirty, we're gonna set this to uh, 5300K. And if we want to, we can always change it in post-processing if we're shooting in RAW. Uh, but this will get us really close so that any changes we make in post-processing will be minor, if any. All right, so I've set up my two lights. I have the Godox V1 here, which is my key light. So I'm just going to kind of point that towards me. And then I have the uh, 8200 here, just pointing up at the ceiling to create a little hair light and rim lighting. Very simple setup for portrait. And uh, let me just go ahead and uh, with the remote trigger, just take a quick picture. Make sure I'm lined up here. Okay. All right, and I think that came out pretty good. And that's not bad considering we just put everything basically in full auto, right? Aperture priority and TTL mode on the flashes. Now, all I'm gonna do now is just swap the Godox V1 over here with the TT350 uh, and show you how to, you know, kind of reverse and set up the TT350 to be in receiver mode and the V1 to be in transmitter mode. And that'll be very quick. All right, so on the TT350, you see the little sideways lightning bolt or sync button. We just push and hold that until the uh, wireless icon starts blinking again. And we're going to rotate the dial so that the icon down here changes from a bold M to a bold S. So now this is in slave mode and we're still on channel eight, so we'll just click the set button. On the uh, V1, all we have to do is uh, click on this little sideways lightning bolt and put this into transmitter mode. And we know we're in transmitter mode when we see the wireless icon and then all the different groups here. And we have the same lettering system. We have M letting us know that this is the master flash. Currently it's in manual mode. We wanna change that, so we do that by pushing this and I'm going to change this so that it's off. It doesn't say off, but if you see three dashes, that means this will not fire, but it'll still fire the other two flashes, in this case, the uh, TT350 and the 8200. And then flash A, we want to make sure this is in group A, which it is in group A. Uh, if we need to change the group, then we can just push this button. Now this is B, C, D, I'm sorry, it goes back to A. So this can only go A, B, or C. So we're gonna make sure this is in A, and we're gonna set A to TTL mode. So we do that by pushing this button to set the A mode. So we'll set that to TTL, so it just kind of toggles through. Group B is currently off. We're gonna set that also to TTL because that's our uh, Godox 8200 flash. And we're all done here. So let me just go ahead and set the uh, lights back up. All right, let's see how that works out. <laughs> Wow, that's quite a difference. Um, let's do one more test shot in case something was read wrong. Okay, so for whatever reason right now, the uh, 8200 uh, is throwing out too much light, but the TT350 seems about right. So uh, for whatever reason, when I swapped the flash, 
the uh, metering is very different. So what I'm going to do is just dial in some exposure comp on the uh, uh, 8200. So it looks like it's two or three stops too bright. So I'm just going to turn it to a negative three. And it's very easy to do. I just do that on the back here. So I select B and I just dial in negative three, which is the maximum exposure comp. Again, I don't do the exposure comp in camera. I always do it on the uh, trigger. So let's see how that looks. And hopefully this one will be right. So that's kind of what happens when you rely on TTL for the camera to try to figure out all the metering. Sometimes it gets it wrong. Uh, because I switched the lighting setup, something was, it was seeing something differently and gave me a totally different uh, exposure. But that said, it's easy enough to adjust. Uh, I just dialed an exposure comp on the trigger here and everything was fine. Now what I want to do now is actually I want to add in uh, this flash and I'm going to turn off the 8200. Because remember I said that uh, a lot of flashes, they have optical triggers built in like this one. And even though it doesn't have a compatible uh, radio trigger or receiver built with the Godox system, because this is a young Nuo, I can set it to the optical trigger to fire whenever it sees another flash fire. So all I have to do is um, put this into uh, S1 mode. And I do that you know, by just selecting it here. So now it's in S1 mode. And I have to manually set the power on this flash. So I'm just going to start at 1 1 because I'm going to have it pretty close up to the uh, backdrop here. I'm going to set it right about here. And what I want to do is try to create a light, a dark on my left side shoulder, and then light again behind me. So I get this uh, light, dark, light, dark kind of exposure. See how that looks. Uh, also, I need to make sure I turn off the 8200. Uh, so I'm just going to go onto the trigger here and make sure there's three dots. All right, good. So as you can see, I got the dark, then light, then dark, and then light again. So that's basically how you get the Godox flashes to work as wireless triggers all by themselves without having to buy a separate dedicated wireless trigger like this one here. In fact, I think I paid like $80 for this all by itself. And what I'd recommend is if you have a Godox TT350 and you want to get into off-camera flash, rather than buying a, a trigger, buy another Godox TT350 and now you have two flashes. Uh, and you can always get this later if you need it. But uh, in fact, professionally how I operate is I typically I do have the V1 acting as my main wireless trigger for my other flashes. And I only bring this with me when I need a, a backup you know, or if I think I might need to take this off camera for, uh, for additional lighting in the background or whatever. But anyhow, uh, I plan on doing more videos on flash photography because I didn't get into any of the uh, settings like uh, ISO and shutter speed and aperture and why you might want to change those and using the flashes in full manual and how to adjust exposures and do all kinds of neat things that you can do with flash. But that's all I have for today. And if you find these videos helpful, consider supporting the channel by buying me a coffee or making a donation on links below because they are greatly appreciated and they help me to continue making videos like this for you. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon.